Good day, everyone. We are the Copico 4-in-1 group, and we're here to report about Coffee Commodity Analysis Paper. I am Scanner Malabalan, and I am one of the authors. And let me introduce to you coffee, or its scientific name, coffea. It is a shrub or small tree that is native to tropical and southern Africa and tropical Asia. It is a genus of flowering plants in the family Rubiceae, and there are about 25 to 100 species of coffee plants that exist. It is one of the world's most valuable and widely traded commodity crop. The first coffee tree in the country was founded in Lipaba, Tangas by a Spanish monk in 1740. Then, um, the coffee spread in the whole Batangas and eventually, Lipa became the country's coffee capital and in 1889, coffee ras struck the shores of the Philippines. Coffee production was reduced to one-sixth of its original volume in just two years. There are four important varieties of coffee named Robusta, Liberica, Excelsa, and Arabica. Robusta and Arabica is the two of the most um, Famous are the major coffee species, and Robusta is the one that is most produced in the Philippines, while Arabica is the most expensive one. The top five coffee producers as of 2019 with um, Brazil as top one with 2.590 metric tons, followed by Vietnam, Colombia, Indonesia, and Ethiopia. The top coffee producer in the Philippines is the Davao region. This is the most updated one as of September 2020 with 2.07 metric tons. Um, here are the socioeconomic importance of coffee in the country. Coffee is widely accepted not just in the country but also in worldwide. The coffee industry is valued approximately $100 billion in 2019. For a farmer, coffee is a profitable business. According to PSA, the average income of a farmer in one production is 14,403 pesos per hectare. Coffee is an important drink in the country. According to Business Mirror, 9 out of 10 Filipinos consume coffee every day. Filipinos are heavy drinkers of coffee. Next is the agribusiness system components. We start with the input subsystem. Major inputs include labor, fertilizers, and land. PSA data shows that labor has the highest cost among the inputs. For the sources, we can get other inputs from authorized dealers. Nurseries provide the seeds or cuttings of coffee. These are used to plant it. Here are some of the problems and prospects of coffee in the input sector. For the prospect, the four important coffee variety is available and can be grown in the country. Then, the problems, uh, limited stock of quality seeds, and then the lack of modern production techniques, high cost of inputs, outdated agriculture techniques, and lack of trained propagators. The second agribusiness component is the farm sector. In regards to coffee production trends, volume, and prices, the popularity of coffee is guaranteed. An average Filipino consumes coffee twice a day. Instant coffee comprises of 90% of all coffee consumption of Filipinos, with Nescafe dominating the industry with a market share of 80%. They are available in almost every market such as Sari Sari stores and supermarkets for about 3 to 12 pesos. Coffee farms in the country are dominated by small to medium scaled farms with only a few commercial sized ones. These farms are located across different regions. In the country, four varieties of coffee are grown such as Arabica, Excelsa, Liberica, and lastly is Robusta, the variety used for instant coffee. The cultural management practices adopted by coffee farmers are planting, weeding, mulching, erosion control, rainwater harvesting, and fertilizer application. When it comes to the technological development, considering majority are smallholder farmers, affordability is an issue, which is why support from both government and private sectors is needed. Government sectors aid farmers through implementing irrigation equipment, inputs, helping in the improvement of the processing sector, and also through research and development programs. Another vital development in the sector is the promotion of more GMP and GAP certified farms. Production opportunities are also present in the coffee industry. First off, the global demand for coffee continuously increases. This gives a stronger drive for the government and private sectors to support the industry and aid boost production. Another opportunity for the country's coffee production is its advantage of being located in the coffee belt. 
Despite the support from government and private institutions, it's still not enough to put the industry in a good competitive position. The industry is low in export by high in importation. This is considered a threat to our local farmers. Aside from that, some of the other disadvantages are poor farm management practices, the proliferation of old trees, limited planting and replanting materials, climate change, and the lack of education regarding it. The third agribusiness component is the processing sector. Different varieties of processed coffee include coffee beans, roasted beans, ground coffee, soluble coffee, and specialty coffee, with robusta and arabica beans being the most dominant varieties in the market. Although globally Arabica is more in demand, markets of Robusta beans or instant coffee shifted to Asia and explain it being the most in demand in the country. Several well-known industry players of both Robusta and those offering Arabica coffee are well-known throughout the country as seen in the slides. In the process of manufacturing the coffee we see in markets, coffee beans go through primary processing which are depulping, fermentation, drying, and lastly the hulling. Arabica beans are processed in a different but quite similar way called wet primary processing. It is done by pulping the cherry, soaking it overnight, washing, and then drying it. Farmers are the ones who usually do the primary processing manually, but there are also other stakeholders who facilitate primary processing and have proper and better equipment. Primary processed beans are sold to traders or secondary processors. Then, the secondary processors create different varieties of coffee products we see now in the market. The volume and value of Robusta and Arabica beans have created cash flows considering the scale of production and demand. The production of Robusta beans cost to 37.33 pesos, assuming that the planting density is 850 trees intercropped with others per hectare, then sold by the farmers at a price of 80 pesos with a profitability of 34.95 pesos per kilogram. In the case of Arabica beans, production costs 55.33 pesos per kilogram, farmers sell them at a price of 80 pesos and a profitability of 34.95 pesos. They are then acquired by traders and then sold with a profitability of 43.50 pesos. Then the secondary processors sell Arabica coffee at a cost of 440 pesos per kilogram and a profitability of 224.66 per kilogram. Processing opportunities include high demand that up sectors to support and aid the industry and its farmers. Thus, they provide them with processing equipment that is available in some large coffee producing regions. The unfortunate reality is not everyone has access to these types of equipment. That is why farmers, given limited funds and resources, sun dry coffee although it affects its quality and value. Marketing channels. Marketing channel includes the people, organization, and activities needed for a business to transfer products from production up to consumption. In terms of coffee, this is the marketing channel of coffee. Let's start with coffee growers. They can be small-scale or large-scale production of coffee. There are farmers or non-farmers engaged in converting the dry cherries into green beans before they can proceed into processing. Middlemen are considered a bridge between coffee producers and consumers, and they also aim to minimize the charge of coffee farmers from whom they buy unroasted beans. Government agencies are engaged in trade by purchasing the majority of the green beans at a set price and exporting them to exporters. While brokers can either be small or large-scale vendors who buy and then sell green beans to the roasters at a negotiated price. Exporters purchased from the processors directly or via a government-led auction, and roasters and grinders are in charge of converting green beans into roasted ones, ground coffee, and ready-to-market instant coffee for shipment. Lastly, end users or consumers who buy from supermarkets, shopping centers, or convenience stores that have available coffee and ground instant coffee. The next component is the support sector agri-services. Some of the institutions, both government and private sectors, which each do their part in helping the industry to improve are the PPI, DNR, DTI, BSWM, Filmec, the Coffee Industry Development Technical Working Group, Grow Asia, and also World Economic Forum, Grow Asia, Philippine Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture. Development programs and projects are provided both by the government and private institutions. The government sector through the ENR's National Greening Program allowed the plantation of 73,000 hectares of land and 500 coffee seedlings per hectare. 
This program is launched in CAR, Cagayan Valley, and Sox Sargent. Private sectors support the industry as a part of their corporate social responsibility by providing education, training programs on production, post-harvesting, and even entrepreneurship. Implementation of GAP certifications, technical assistance, and credit programs for our farmers. Due to the industry status, investment priorities must be focused on new plantation areas that call for public-private partnership, wider availability of processing equipments, provision of investment-friendly programs, and financial aiding policies and subsidies for smallholder farmers. Some of the agri-service projects made for the industry include farm-to-market roads, tramlines, and also market intelligence databases. For the integrated analysis, we discuss the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of the different sectors involved. Now, for the input sector, the strength is the availability of the four important varieties. High cost of farm inputs is one of its weaknesses. For the opportunity, there is a support from private institutions and local government. Trends, threats, winding resources in the country. For the production sector, there is a favorable climatic conditions. Weaknesses involve the aging trees in the country, poor management practices of the farmers. For the opportunity, there is a available production technologies. Then in threats, there is an increasing volume of importation in the country. Processing sector, existing and available processing technologies for the strengths. Then the weaknesses, low utilization of the processing facilities, and lack of quality standards. The opportunities involve the available of coffee milling facilities. Then, in threats, there is also an increasing importation in the country. For the marketing sector, we discussed earlier the acceptability of coffee in the country. It is considered its strength. The weaknesses involve the unfragmented and unorganized farmers in the country. Opportunities, big company such as Nestle Philippines provides a ready market to the farmers. Threats, and stable price of the commodity. Lastly, the support services sector. It strengths uh, persistent support of stakeholders. Gathering of reliable data is considered its weakness. In conclusion, the coffee industry is one of the most traded commodities in the world. While the first coffee tree was introduced in the Philippines in 1740, the commodity spread all throughout the other parts of Batangas and began trading in the Suez Canal and Europe market. The Philippines also became the only source of coffee beans worldwide in 1880, but unfortunately, coffee rust reached the country by the end of the decade that destroyed all coffee trees. Fortunately, the country's coffee journey did not end there because the country is located along the bean belt where there is favorable climate and soil conditions to produce the four varieties of commercially available coffee. Currently, the country is in the middle of the Philippine Coffee Industry Roadmap 2017 to 2020 that aims to provide both internal and external assessments of the industry. By the end of 2022, the expectations will be to increase their average yield of 1 ton per hectare and provide for the needed volume of 214 to 2626 metric tons, increasing the self-sufficiency level from 41.06% to 160.16%, both benefiting the farmers and increasing farm productivity.